Welcome to Philosophy and Critical Thinking, The Basics. In our last video, we discussed ethics, utilitarianism. In this video, we're going to be discussing categorical imperatives. The philosopher who, who approached this form of ethics and morality in philosophy was Immanuel Kant. Immanuel Kant came up with two ways of thinking about us having reasons to do something. This is what he called hypothetical imperatives and categorical imperatives. Hypothetical imperatives are sound arguments based on desires that you have. The logical form of a hypothetical imperative would look like this. Premise 1, if I do A, then I'll get B. Premise 2, I desire B. Premise 3, I should do what will get me what I desire. Therefore, 4, I should do A. In contrast to hypothetical imperatives, what Kant is interested in is categorical imperatives, which is something that we know we should do regardless of any desires. We would imagine these situations quite often. There'll be times where you'll think to yourself, I really want to do this, I really want to get something out of this, but I just know it's the wrong thing to do. I, I, I know I shouldn't do that. This would be what we would know as a categorical imperative. Kant's categorical imperative is based out of respect for the moral law. This isn't the same as the legal law. For instance, that time of Nazi Germany and you had legal laws during Nazi Germany that were profoundly immoral. So the moral law is discussing things like moral duties, what we expect from each other as fellow human beings morally, the, what these expectations we have with one another. This is what Kant's referring to as respect for the moral law. The way to try and figure this out, according to Kant, is to act only in accordance with that maxim through which you can at the same time will that it become a universal law. Now, that what he's trying to pull out there, there is saying that if you want to think about whether you should do something, try and imagine a possible world where everybody was going to behave that way and everyone would treat that way as morally acceptable. Uh, so the way you can think about this is have that possible world is that going to be a world we would want if everyone treated that as morally permissible? A good example could be, say, you want to cheat on your exam. You're doing an exam and you want to cheat on your exam. And say you want to take that utilitarian approach and you're able to argue a case saying, you know what, it's okay for me to cheat on this exam. No one else is going to be hurt by it, but you know what, I'm going to get a lot of pleasure. I'm going to get a lot of advantages out of it. And with this particular exam, me getting a good mark isn't going to impact anybody else's success or failure in, in what I'm trying to achieve, but I'm going to get a lot out of it and no one else is going to get hurt. So you know what, there's nothing wrong with me cheating on this exam. If we would apply the Kant's categorical imperative, is we could quickly find out that if we imagined a world where everybody was um, allowed to cheat on their exams, then this would be a world we wouldn't want to live in. You'd have a lot of people who weren't qualified in whatever they were trying to do, or in, and so on and so forth. So you can use that method to say, no, you should, even though in this particular circumstance you can argue that you know, the, the pleasure outright weighs the pain, that the, and if we were to see this as a universal law, this would be a quite a horrible world to live in. So we have a categorical imperative to not cheat on the exam. So just uh, quickly going over that again, just to put it in a bit more clearer structure, we can put this into logical form where we can say premise one, I can do A or B. Premise two, if, I, if A were to become a universal law, it would be acceptable. Premise three, if B were to become, become a universal law, it would not be acceptable. Premise four, we should only do things that would be acceptable if they were to become a universal law. 
Therefore, conclusion five, I should do A and I should not do B. If you want more information, you can go onto the website www.philosophycriticalthinking.com or you can purchase the book 12 Theories of Human Nature by L. Stevenson, D. L. Haberman and P. M. Wright. And you can go on to the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy's uh, website and look under the um, section called Kant's Moral Philosophy. And that's a good outline of the categorical imperative. In our next video, we'll be discussing virtue ethics. If you want to stay in tune for that, please subscribe and click the bell. Thanks.